As you are about to enter an institution of higher learning, preparatory options range from bridging courses, which focus on a specific specialist area, often a prerequisite, and usually last a couple of weeks, to year-long foundation courses designed to prepare students for entry into a particular degree. This practice is a non-starter for the Botswana University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, who insist that their student entrants go through. Basic sciences are actually just natural sciences, being chemistry, biology, physics, mathematics, and ICT. So what we do as a basic science department is to offer foundation uh, courses to uh, prepare students for higher level in their programs. As you know, this is an agriculture and related uh, field institution. So because it's, it's science-based, so they need science foundation. So that's what uh, we do here, to offer foundation level. So we only offer science at 100 level. So once they get to level 200, which is year two, then they go to different programs. Like uh, they would, some people will be registered for animal, BSc animal science, some people will be registered for uh, BSc food science, uh, BSc crop science, and others. We do teaching here is that students, they have lectures, they also have tutorials, they also have laboratory practicals. So if a student doesn't understand uh, theory in the lecture, so there are tutorials. And then that theory is also enhanced by putting the theory into practice in the laboratory sessions. So that's how we enhance the student learning. So we do also encourage one-to-one. Uh, -one. A student coming to my office, if she or he doesn't understand a thing in the lab or in the tutorial or in the so that's how we uh, enhance the students' learning. You know, agriculture is a very profitable uh, adventure or enterprise. So if you look at uh, Botswana currently, we are importing uh, our food mostly from outside. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, agriculture is the way to go. You need to come here and get the right skills so that you can be productive and that will make you a, a millionaire. While a key part of university is about studying and achieving a degree, it is also important for students to be able to have an active social life at university. Getting involved in extracurricular activities can help students to broaden their interests and bulk up their CVs, as well as providing some time away from their studies. Agricultural economics basically is about the demand supply, managing enterprises, we're planning also the caps, the fiscal policies. As you know that we are researchers and also we do research in agriculture. Basically it's just a wide road of economics. Fresh student life, starting off at first year, studying BSc, challenges there and there, but the most important thing was that having focus on what you're doing, it was very fun because we had student games, um, also there are clubs in school. We have different clubs. I myself personally am president of the Bua Marketing Agency. Okay. Yes. So there's the YEN, it deals with entrepreneurship, youth entrepreneurship. There's Christian Fellowship. There's SAHA, Student Against HIV and AIDS. The focus of higher education should be on creating prepared minds in their graduates and government-sponsored research and development in higher education institutions is a great way to enrich the education of future scientists. However, at Buan, besides providing educational services, they celebrate the fact that they also provide a service that is very worthwhile to the general public. That is, veterinary services. Buan Veterinary Clinic offers services, veterinary services, to the public at large, rich or poor, doesn't matter where they come from. We charge fees. We don't offer services for free, we offer services at a fee. 
we use the guidance of the Botswana Veterinary Association, just like private uh, clinics in the city. Um, basically, we charge the same fees. There could be discounts here and there, but it's basically the same fees. Yes. I mean, you can bring your animals any day. You just walk through and tell us what the problem of your animal is. We attend to, I would say, all types of animals, um, small and large, small, mainly dogs and cats. Those are small animals. Large animals, cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, horses, donkeys, mainly. But our main patient here is the dog, probably followed by the cat. We are capacitated to some extent, probably not fully, or what we wish we could be capacitated up to. Yes, but yes, we are able to do most surgeries, probably not everything, but most surgeries, mainly soft tissue surgery, not bones, but we can, yes, do the amputations, which is bone surgery or orthopedic surgery. We do do that. We do prepucial prolapses in bulls. That's basically bull circumcision. That's the equivalent. Oh, okay. We do all those. You can go out to the field, or you can bring your bull here, and we operate on that. Ah, that uh, the public out there, I mean, should know that this is not just an agricultural schools of making, you know, um, growing crops. Huh? We also do clinical work or offer veterinary services just like private clinics in the city so people should bring their animals here i know because it says university of agriculture people are always thinking just growing of crops and probably the farm looking after animals there no we do offer veterinary services so people can bring their animals here any day anytime because we do routine vaccinations five in one vaccines if we have heard of that Rabies in Setsuana is called Molaf. Yes, it's a disease that mainly affects the dog family. But it affects, it's a disease of all warm-blooded animals. But like I said, mainly the dog family. Hmm? But it can affect cattle, sheep, and goats. Those can usually acquire infection from the bite from rabid dog family, including jackals. Yes, which is what we have in Botswana. Mm -hmm. Jackals or foxes, mm -hmm. hyenas, etc. etc. Yes. Infection is transmitted by the bite of an infected animal. So, this animal is rabid, bites this other one, acquires infection, bites the other one, gets infection. Yes. Or via fresh saliva of an infected animal if it comes into contact with broken skin of an animal the virus can enter and start multiplying once it gets inside in the muscle and then from the muscle it gets to the nerves and then it continues from the nerves like from our arms or legs all the way into the spinal cord then to the brain that's where problems start because now the brain swells, becomes painful. Obviously, now there's loss of coordination because of damage to nerves. The nerves are the ones that help the muscles to work. We call it innervation. So they help the muscles to work. And once the nerves are damaged, then the muscles cannot work properly. That's why you see uh, rabies as a paralytic disease. They become paralyzed because now there's no coordination.